All right, so we will resume the meeting. We started our meeting this evening in an executive session um, as we were continuing to discuss um, the confidential contract negotiations with the town of Royalton uh, in regards to the interlocal agreement at, at the transfer station. So um, coming out, we, we wanted to um, update everybody on, um, so the, the town of Royalton and the town of Bethel I believe the operation of the Bethel Royalton transfer station has become increasingly complex and is no longer well served by the interlocal agreement and being overseen by a committee. We feel the transfer station will be best operated as a service under management of one town. For that reason, we are moving forward with transferring sole ownership to the town of Royalton. The town of Bethel will continue to be members of the White River Alliance and the transfer station will continue its operations as usual. Bethel residents will continue to bring their trash and recycling to the transfer station as they always have. Um, so coming out um, of session, because we can't make motions in executive session, so at this point I am entertaining a motion to move forward with transferring the town of Bethel's interests into the transfer station to the town of Royalton. I'll so move. I have a motion in the chat to Therese. Okay, hang on, Jean. I move that we... Oh, sorry. I move that we move forward. Delete. I already shut mine off. No, you didn't. I can, I can read it, but... H hang on one second, please. So I've muted my camera. No, that's that's your audio. Yeah. I thought I was muted. Oh, sorry. Okay. Ooh, ah. Okay. So Jean said, "I move." Okay, that we move forward with the transfer of Bethel's interests in the transfer station from the town of Bethel to the town of Royalton. That was Jean's motion. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Hang on one second. I just need to write this down. Move forward. With the transfer of Bethel's. I'm taking the minutes too. Interests in the transfer station from TO. Yeah, I thought you'd just be able to copy that. Well, I'm handwriting. I am copying it to the town of. Royalton. Okay, so Jean moved. Okay, right. so now we'll just um, uh, prove the agenda for this evening. We know we've already done a part of the agenda. So is there anything else that needs to be amended or are we good to approve it as written? You're good to approve it. So moved as there's no amendments. Second. Okay, all, all in favor? Aye. Aye. It's only one other person. <laughs> Uh, Dave's not with us this evening as he's not feeling well, so he is not available in person or through the Zoom this evening. So if anybody's looking for Dave, that's why you don't see him this evening. So, um, so we, have, we do have an appointment scheduled for 6.05, and I do not see him looking right now. I do not see the parties here, so if the board's okay with that, we'll I'm just... I'm not hearing you. Is that my fault? We were having some local audio issues, so we're just going through the laptop. Um, so at some times, you may may not hear Paul or Lindley as much as um, Teresa and I, because we're sitting next to each other. Uh, but we'll try to convey what's happening <laughs> um, through this. So um, at this point, we, we do have a scheduled appointment for 6.05. I do not see the... Um, nope. I don't see anybody, nope. definitely not here, not online. So for now with the board, if the board's okay, just maybe just keep it as a placeholder and if, if they come on or show up, then we can yeah, sure. uh, do it at that point. So in that case, we'll just move on to public comment. So if there's anything yes. that- Did we get that motion? Yes. Yep. Okay, because I'd never heard it, but and neither did anybody else over here. Okay, I can, um, so Jean moved to move forward with the transfer of Bethel's interest in the transfer station from the town of Bethel to the town of Royalton. And it passed. 
And you read the uh, news Chris, release? Chris read the press release, yep. Would you like him to read it again? For the sake of the other people who are visiting, I think that we should. Sure. Yep. All right, so um, so the press release, which will go into the paper this week, um, so that the town of Royalton and the town of Bethel believe the operation of the Bethel Royalton transfer station has become increasingly complex and is no longer well served by the interlocal agreement and being overseen by a committee. We feel the transfer station will be best operated as a service under management of one town. For that reason, we are moving forward with transferring sole ownership to the town of Royalton. The town of Bethel will continue to be members of the White River Alliance, and the transfer station will continue its operations as usual. Bethel residents will continue to bring their trash and recycling to the transfer station as they always have. So that was, that is and will be the press release piece of it. So, I mean, I think the important thing on, um, for all of our community members here is that, you know, again, when it comes to, um, with our trash and recycling needs that, you know, that day-to-day -day, um, operations or ventures over there won't change. Um, the, the only changes are made behind the scenes with, with who is solely responsible for the transfer station and its um, management over there. So, wanted to just make sure because there probably will be a little bit of confusion um, um, that we will sort through through the process. And and once you know the um, final details are are all put together, then um, we'll we'll pass those along. So. Um, Thank so we you were for bringing us up to date. Appreciate it. <laughs> Anytime, Gene. <laughs> so at this point, we were moving open to um, public comment. So if there's anything that's not on the agenda this evening that anybody would like to um, share or bring up, now's the time to do it. Um, this might become a little bit difficult because we do have two gentlemen that are sitting in the audience, um, as well as um, half a dozen people on the computer. So we'll do our best to. Um, to uh, convey the comments back and forth as needed. So uh, maybe what we'll do is we'll check uh, on check on Zoom us. first for any public comment, and then we'll go to in person and see if there's any public comment there. Okay, so not seeing any on the Zoom site. Is there any public comment from our two individuals that are sitting in the sold out theater this evening? <laughs> Yeah, I have a question. Uh, I'm not sure if we something out by going over here and there. I noticed uh, this past week the subs putting in culverts. I was wondering. Yeah, we did do two. We were kind of in an emergency situation just because of the uh, the mud. we were having such a mud season, so we did just did two kind of in an emergency situation that were. Um, Alan needed to have dealt with. So we did do those two, but anything else is out to bid. I just did out a Christian Hill bid, um, that's out. And so everything else went out into the newspaper. So it was just those two. We do have some, a bid that we did last year through ditching um, from Gilead and a portion of that <clears throat> project will finish in this next fiscal year in July because <clears throat> we have a $30,000 ditching budget. And so that portion of that will finish up and it'll leave some money left. And I think we were headed to, oh, not Dart, um, Brink, I think. There was a piece up there that we were going to do because I think that was the voted budget was 30 I noticed that uh, one of the culverts was on Cherry Lane. That's a dead end road, but it's not paved. It's Right. Really we're actually going to be one. doing a big paving grant, so it would have to come in at some point. So we did that one. The one up above it just kind of slid. But... That one was, he said, was kind of collapsing, and so we had somebody there doing one up the street. He just figured he'd do the second because we did just put out a paving grant for that, so um, for Christian Hill. So if we got the money, we would have had to do it anyway. So I think he just figured if they were there, might as well just take care of it. So I think it was twelve hundred bucks. Not um, cheaper to pay our guys overtime. Yeah, well, I, but he was in a position where he couldn't because the roads were so bad. He was he needed to get out. Obviously, this was a mud season that we haven't seen in a while. So, at least not in the last couple of years. So the the question that from the audience um, was that um, in regards to some of the culvert work that has been done here of recent, we 
we had to subcontract out um, some of the work while we were um, fighting the battles on two fronts with the mud season as well as um, a culvert that had failed that was being replaced and another culvert that while we were replacing a failed culvert was determined that needed to be replaced as well, right? Is that right? Yeah. So. Any other public comment? Well, well, I'll just go on the culvert. Is all the culverts have been uh, looked at that needs to be replaced so far? If they, we did have um, two rivers came and did a huge culvert inventory, so we have a big book now of every culvert that the status of it, they do rate them whether they're poor, good, fair, new, tell yeah. us exactly what they are. So I have a map, um, Alan had a map at the town garage, so he goes through whenever they change one, they mark it, and then we can send that information to Rivers so that they upgrade it. And we're actually, Chris, uh, myself, Ryan Slack, we've been working on setting up a master road to kind of have, be able to put all this information into one big spreadsheet so that we can look at it and start obviously figuring out you know what road's critical and kind of going that way. So that way too, if we're doing, say, a ditching, bid we know what on the road needs to be taken care of um, we just received another better back roads grant to do more of those um, and both of you are familiar with them those uh, projects because they're in hydrologically connected segments so when you have to stone line the ditches and do that so we also use that information to choose areas um, where roads need to be brought up to meet those standards so that we're adhering to our annual general permit so okay um, and we're working in, like Therese said, we're trying to work on all the pieces of the gravel road piece of, you know, the light and gravel road, which uh, we've been working on that, which we, from doing some research about every seven years, as well as like a paved road of every, you know, 11 or 12 years. So we're, and we're trying to get the pieces of, you know, culvert inventory um, and, and like um, Therese was talking about, storm water management <coughs> with ditching so that we can tie those pieces in. So. You know, we're doing some of the stormwater management and, uh, you know, a year or two ahead of, you know, gravel and road or paving the road so, mm -hmm. so that we get a good um, schedule in there for everything. So we're, we're working on, on all those pieces. Um, I think the other thing, since we're talking about roads, too, it may also be the right time to say that um, the current road foreman, um, Alan Patton, is leaving Bethel and April 22nd will be his last day. So we want to wish him the best as he moves on to greener pastures, mm -hmm. as they say. Now on the reason I was, that was brought up too, because the road leads down to Finley Bridge, what is it, North? What's Main? North Main. North Main, yeah. Yeah, just as you pass Sanders Road going out that way, it's a short segment there. Please ask the people who are Dean, making comments to move closer to your computer. Then we will be able to hear as well. Let me try turning. Yeah. Okay, sorry, Dean. <laughs> Go ahead. Or, uh, Doug, you might I, want to. I still would invite them to move forward. Okay. You want to come up okay. and talk a little closer? <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Doug. That's all right. Thank the you. The reason I was asking this was because when I come up on the North Main, yep. Okay, just past uh, Kristen Hill, they took the grader and they, which is normal, do you know, to push the mud and stuff off to the side. Mm -hmm. But now it's created a barrier where, just as you pass Sanders Road, there's a culvert there coming off of Sanders Road to feed into yeah. North Main. From there forward, it's another down before there's a four uh, some COVID that crosses the road. Uh -huh. And then from there, which was rock frozen you know, the way it's thawed out now, but that definitely gonna be needing some attention done to it. And from there on, it's just a little short segment, maybe about just coming down the hill. No, just before you get to um Sanders. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, Davis. Davis's house. Chuck. Yep. Before Chuck Davis's. Yeah, it's, on North it's Main? Davis, Charles Davis. Yeah, yeah on the right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, right. Just before you get to his place, it's another little short call. So between yes, there, you're right. I know what you mean. Okay, yeah. Yeah, okay. between there and um, up to oh, the other culvert, the water just running down. It's not even going into the culvert. Yeah. And for that right there, would would this is just a suggestion? Mm -hmm. It's only would take maybe one, maybe two men to do it. 
we can just block the road off and they can dish that with the back because it's a very short distance okay I'll make it can be done mm -hmm. yeah i know they're out like today I mean, you take a scoop it and just pull it over and then they take the greater just pushes the rest of the way off to the side yeah and that way that water will run from sanders road into the first culvert and then the next goal would go to the other one. There's three coals on the road that's very close together. Yep. And two of them's not getting taken. Yeah. Through. That was the only thing that, and it would definitely would help the road to dry faster just by getting that water coming right. down, bleeding into it. Yeah. Sure. I know they're on Peavine right now and they're trying to make the rounds. Currently, we're at, we're at three people right as of today. There's three people. Um, hopefully we're back to four tomorrow and then Paul is our seasonal. He may be done on Friday. So by the 22nd, I could be down to two people. Uh -huh. So, <laughs> you know, so, so we're, 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 yeah. <laughs> so we, so, so we know, so, you know, yeah. it's just triage at this point, but they're out grading and they're just going to keep grading all week. And, um, so, but I will point this, I know I'll point this out. I know we had P Vine and he's trying to get in a circle, but I definitely appreciate your the notes and, and I will give them to him. So thank you. I was just thinking about that. Yeah, yeah no, thank All you. Right. That's that's helpful, Doug. So All thank right. you. Um, so what thank are, you. What are the uh, plans to replace Alan? Um, there's a, the advertisement. It was in the paper last week. Um, I released it out on the state. Uh, Holly Hayden, you can release to, you know, the big list serve. So that's out. Um, we're going to start interviewing this week. Um, so well, the position is open until filled. That's what we're doing right now. Okay. Any further public comment? Yes, just a question. Sure. Has there been any progress on the data collection by the constable? What, what do you mean? Well, you know, a few meetings ago, we were talking about co collecting more police data on arrests and stops and things of that nature, um, who's stopped, all of that. Has there been any progress on that? Um, what I'm... I'm drawing a complete blank right now. What I can tell you is that the state, apparently we had not released two years of our data on the state website. And that was just corrected like a week or a week and a half or two weeks ago. There was some, I don't know, technical issue between the state and Oscar, but they worked it out. So that data was just released. Um, I'm, I'm, not, I'm drawing a complete blank here about what she's Oscar was going to do. I know we'd given him feedback from the EIC, and he, I'd asked him to look at it. But I, honestly, I haven't seen Oscar for more than two minutes because he's been on mandatory overtime in Royalton. Well, there's been very limited, yeah, very limited coverage in the town of Bethel here over the last, you know, probably month or two. <laughs> at yet. least, um, at least. But that, that information that was released, and yeah, back years to give them more information, more current information. The one that we already gave them? Yeah, correct. Yeah. yeah. Well, I know there was some some uh, issues with the statistics, and I did give that information to Oscar and asked him to look at it because I said, because they had some great, Lenny and the um, EIC had some great points about the way things were calculating or not calculating right. But, uh, but honestly, I think I laid eyes on Oscar for about 15 seconds um, last week. Do you think, um, Lenny? Do you think you could um, go through the same channels that you that you and the committee used last time, and then just maybe um, get some feedback to Therese on if it's actually been published? And sure. And then absolutely. maybe what other information might be lacking, if if any. Absolutely. Sure, that'd be helpful. Then I'm assuming that's on the state site. Is that yeah. correct? Yeah. 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 It's, pretty, it's pretty thorough. Yeah, and so he did. I mean, I would take a look at it, but I wouldn't know what the difference yeah. of the data from before. So, yeah. if somebody with eyes that had just looked at it prior would know, was there for the was, yeah, yeah, and that is out. The guy, okay. I got confirmation from the state that he took care of it. Okay. Yeah, just get back on. Just let Therese know plenty on that. And sure. Thank you. <clears throat> any any other comments? Not seeing any, we will move forward. So the um, first, 
item on our agenda, official agenda, was to talk about the American Rescue Plan um, Act um, and the money um, associated with it. So as I think, well, probably as a majority of people have, have um, been informed in one way or another that, that there was some monies that were given to each town in regards to in regards to the American Rescue Plan Act, um, which was what, officially, what, September? So we have received half and um, we'll received half next year. And we're starting to see the money, and um, and at first it was, uh, at first it was uh, pretty strong limitations on what you could use the money for. Um, yeah, broadband. Broadband, internet. Water sewer. Water sewer. Was it? Um, but it sounds like now that Yep. They've opened it up now. Depending on how you um, accept your standard allowance. portion of your money, you can use it in different forms one way or another. So yep. so we've been kind of talking about uh, at the board level of, you know, what, what are some of the um, things on our list of to do in the town uh, that we could best use that those monies. Um, at this point, I don't think we were going to make a, an official decision on what we were going to do with the money other than to appropriate the money into a... Yeah, we, we, we've already appropriated the money General into the fund. fund. One of the things that happens is they finally, there's been all sorts of um, information put out, and, and they finally come out with what, you know, their, what they call the, the federal government calls their final ruling. So the town of Bethel is going to receive $583,204.68. Um, a motion that the select board is going to have to make or will make tonight is to make a one-time irrevocable decision to elect what is called the standard allowance, um, which is our full ARPA award, and to spend it on government services throughout the performance period of the grant. So what happens is, at first, the feds were, you know, we, we all received money, but they finally figured out that since they were giving out, you know, very small awards in some cases, they didn't want to be doing all the paperwork. So what happens is we accept anybody, with it, they call it, it's the $10 million standard allowance. So we will accept it that way, meaning we'll bring it in as a revenue, and then we can spend it, um, but have to spend it out government services, you know, throughout that the government normally performs. So one of the things that we had talked about originally when we knew that the money originally was only to be used for three things. We knew that some of the money needed to be spent on replacing the sewer pumps, which is around $115,000 to $125,000. Uh, the sewer pumps we have now at the plant are 35 years old. We're rebuilding them now. One of them just failed again. So we rebuild them now on a schedule about every year and a half. So they have definitely outlived their useful life. Um, upgrading the pumps is going to be it's a smart decision. It's the it affects, obviously, it keeps the user rates without affecting the user rates because we don't have to borrow money for it. And because it provides, obviously, downtown businesses have, have sewer. So there certainly is a, is a call you know, for that and, and seems like a good way to spend some of the money to help keep rates and tax rates without being affected. There's also another large generator that goes, is attached to this sewer system that's on Lower Church Street um, that also needs to be upgraded. So we're looking at that. We're waiting on an estimate for that. If I had a number, I'd give it to you. Um, I don't right now. So those are a couple things. And in that case, the select board, as in their role as water sewer commissioners, will most likely what we'll do is we will ha put in an amount in the budget as a revenue for American Rescue Plan money and then an expense for the same amount. So the money will come into the sewer budget and out of the sewer budget of a specific amount. The remainder of the money can be used um, as a non-federal grant match, which is amazing. Um, that helps us do what everybody is encouraging us to do, which is to leverage our ARPA money to get more money. So one of the things that we looked at the other day is pursuing a grant to replace possibly the sidewalk from the base of Sand Hill to the school. There's some places there, there is no sidewalk. Um, in some places there is, but it's small. The retaining wall on private property is kind of falling a little bit. So it's several things that could be taken.
I'm not sure we can guarantee that we would have spent the money by 2026. I think that the garage is possibly a three to maybe five year. I don't know. We're waiting on, you know, pricing right now is really expensive. So, but certainly road infrastructure helps everybody in Bethel. So when it says uh, spend it by 2026, are we talking about January 1st or December 30 30th, 31st? December 31st. Okay. Thank you. That's a whole year different. Yeah. yeah. Yep. December yeah. 31st. So, Sorry. So we'll have some ongoing discussions in regards to, again, like what Tree said, how can we best leverage this money? Yeah. Um, which at this point, we're thinking the best way of leveraging this money is to find grants towards other projects. And we could leverage this money as our piece of the normal, you know, either 10% or 20% or sometimes 25%. Um, piece of a project so yeah um, and we did put that out there was invitations post around town and put up to encourage people to um you know bring so we'll keep this on the agenda a um, couple people emailed saying um some people want to use some of the money to install water meters um and some second um some would like it the rest in you know into the roads um somebody else wanted to use it for uh, to purchase a level three electric vehicle charger and um you know which is a pay-per-use charger so you know so we are receiving some ideas and um but for a while everyone was uh the feds and vlct and two rivers anybody giving us input was saying basically put the brakes on and don't spend it till after don't do anything with it till after march 31st so that's really why it's our first big agenda item but i think lenny has his hand up i think yep you're muted lenny is where do you find what defines government services basically that they it's uh it's one of those <laughs> situations where it's very broad they're basically saying that any service that a government normally provides. Okay. Big enough to drive a tractor trailer through. So we certainly, some of the money can be used, which we will reserve is for if we need a single audit, because if you spend over $750,000 okay. in one year, it kicks off a single audit. Mm -hmm. So some of the money can be used for that. But it's it, it's funny because I attended a class and I actually had more questions than answers and I ended up calling the lady and uh, there's a government finance specialist now through VLCT and I ended up calling Sarah Macy and having a conversation with her um, to see you know what we could do with the money and so at this point at this point <clears throat> you know we like Teresa will continue the discussion as to how we can best utilize this money going forward um but tonight we're just you just need the motion just to to appropriate it as a standard allowance um, right? has stand up. yes oh gene you're muted gene uh two two things that i would add or re reinforce uh, i would reinforce uh climate change grants that may be available that they might be matched, uh, including the uh, the electric vehicle charging stations. I would also suggest that we might be able to use some of that those funds to match grants that may arise out of the uh, better connections uh, work. Uh, and so uh, Absolutely. it makes sense that we would do that. Yep. Hold on, I'm gonna have to talk to my wife. I said. <laughs> okay. And, and like we said, mm -hmm. we'll continue the discussions on looking at all the different, um, well, I guess as we'll call what, um, you know, general services that the town yeah. provides uh, umbrella mm -hmm. uh, to see how we can best leverage that money um, for everybody. So. So you just need the motion yep, that I wrote out. Yep. Anybody want to make, make the motion? Sure. Move that the town of Bethel make the one time irrevocable decision to elect the standard allowance in the amount of $583,204.68, our full ARPA award, to spend on government services throughout the performance of the period of the grant. Okay. Second. Okay. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. 
So, we, and again, we'll, we'll uh, continue the conversation in regard as we get, you know, moving forward on, on that. Yep, Lily. You're still muted. Yep. There you go. Um, sorry, are you, are you, is this an okay time for having a suggestion noted? If you want to note one quickly, sure. Yeah, just, um, I know there's so much to spend money on, but to consider the, a new town website or leveraging money towards a grant for an updated website and that importance of ease of communication for residents. Sure. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Duly noted. <laughs> Right. And again, you know, maybe there's an opportunity for us to do something like we just did with the survey monkey. Maybe there's a opportunity for us to put something together and get feedback. I don't know, or 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 narrow it down to a, I don't know. Well, it's tough. Half a I dozen mean, options or something. But, well, I think yeah, that's it. I mean, but we'll we'll find our best best places to leverage the money because you know, as we know in Bethel, we have lots of different things that. Um, <laughs> Need our um, attention. Yes, need our attention. Um, so we'll see how we can best best appropriate that money um, so it has the minimal um, impact to our tax rate. Um, so moving forward, we have one class one liquor license, um, Creek House Diner that we had in our packets. So we just uh, need a motion to approve the class one liquor license for Creek House Diner. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay, we'll sign up for the approved section. And, and then coming up, we have, um, as we continue, you know, the first, I don't know, three or four meetings of every um, uh, new year after town meeting is, is going through appointments and catching up. Um, on uh, appointed individuals to committees and, and other um, functions in the town government. So we will continue on with that this evening. Uh, so we have some appointments here um, for reappointments to the Conservation Commission, which is Mary Floyd, Emily Miller, Karen Griffin, and Danny Dover. So we just need a motion to reappoint those individuals um, until 2025. Second. Okay. All in favor on that? Aye. Aye. You can just nod, Gene, if you want. Well, I have a question. I Aye. thought we weren't doing seconds. We don't, we're not tonight obliged we're in the, to, we're in the second we, tonight. We, so we talked about last time that yeah. it's somewhat of a good indicator among us that like, yeah, I've got two, yeah. okay. two board right. members. Make sure I didn't want to goof up the yeah. minutes because Julie's not here. <laughs> <laughs> we understand that we're not, we don't have to. Okay, I just want to make sure I'm following all the rules. Yeah, you can do what you want. Because I guess make sure. it, not that it happens often, but if we got in yeah. a situation where somebody just maybe it wasn't second. a favorable motion, mm -hmm. it at least gives us an indicator if, if we're moving forward or do we need to make another motion right now? Yeah. yeah. So all right, that's fine. I just want to make sure. Yeah. You're good with that, Gene. Yep. Yep. Okay. And so we have that conservation commission. Uh, next, we had some reappointments to the DRB board until 2023, so they're one year appointments. So we had Brad Andrews and Owen Daniel McCarter. So just need a motion to reappoint there. So move. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Gene's got the aye. And then we have the revolving loan fund committee. Um, these appointments here are no terms specified, so they're just a year appointment? Yeah. Yearly? So what the situation is now is there's currently a, the passing of Carol Ketchum left, left an opening on the revolving loan fund committee. There's another person who may be retiring. As long as I've been here, there's only been three people on that board. Um, so one person has not yet retired from it, but there's discussion of that. and then. Um, certainly Kirk White, uh, Judy Furland that was in the packet, Abby Solomon um, have all requested to be appointed to the Revolving Loan Fund Committee. Um, both Judy and Abby, and Abby's here to meet you, um, both have experience in banking, which is very nice, which is something obviously that Carol 
um, since he passed away, he obviously brought to the party. So that was very nice. So it's nice to meet you, Abby. Thank you so much for um, so coming. The third person that was on there was uh, Bev Washburn is on. Bev Washburn, Carol, and yeah. then Ellen Noble. Oh, is Ellen? There's a pos. I had heard rumor, but I haven't received a resignation yet or retiring. But that's what I'd heard. Oh, okay. Um, so Abby was gracious enough to send a little more information about herself that you know, wasn't in your packet, that yeah. she's been a loan officer. But maybe you can tell the select board a little bit about yourself, Abby. Hi, I'm Abby Solomon. Um, I've lived in Bethel since uh, August of 2018. Um, I moved to town um, to take a job at a small nonprofit. Um, we're a CDFI that focuses on uh, low to moderate income business owners um, and we have, um, we're a micro lender. So we lend to a, a very um, specific Vermont um, clientele. So our mission is to lend to um, businesses that are having difficulty finding capital through other means. Um, and our loans are anywhere from a thousand to a hundred thousand. Uh, so I'm the loan officer there. Um, we've even in the last three and a half years have evolved a lot. Um, mm -hmm. We're down to two people. Um, so I have a lot of roles beyond underwriting and presenting to loan committees. Um, so uh, I, I write our loan documents. I close out loans um, after they've paid. I, I work with our clients um, our, as um, they're paying their loans and through, through the, the maturity of their loan. Um, and the other unique thing is that we actually manage some town funds. Um, so that is an option for, for certain towns is to have us manage because it's, it is a lot to administer and manage a town fund. Um, so I'm very, I'm familiar with, with how they work. Um, I, I have not read anything on Bethel's. I did do some brief uh, research on trying to find that information, but I'm, I'm not, I haven't been able to find that. Um, so if I become involved, I will be very interested to see how uh, Bethel's works. But um, the importance of small business in Vermont, I mean, it's vital to our community. And uh, when I saw that you were looking for um, volunteers to be part of this committee, I knew I was uniquely <laughs> qualified for it and that I would like to be a part of it specifically for Bethel. Um, I have worked with a couple businesses in Bethel, but um, but this is a great opportunity to to further that that impact in the town that we really intend to stay in and find very important. So I can answer any other questions anybody has. That's great. Thank you. The um, the information, yeah, I can send it to you too. If um, if you send me an email, I can scan it. It's not much there, honestly. There's a little bit of there's a a page or two about the rules kind of and and that's about it they don't they haven't done many loans we did a couple last year sometimes it's just a refinance of something that they've already done um they did one uh, with the local um, laundromat recently and then did a refinance with one of the restaurants and um so but it's nice so it's sometimes they go for a whole year without meeting <laughs> and then they may meet you know for a period of time but um just to go back to this, I, I'm wondering here, Paul, is currently with Ellen and Bev, Carol's gone. I mean, and it, then if Ellen, you know, there was talk, she's gonna, I don't know if she's gonna, she was talking about retiring, but may, and Kirk White was here. I think there was another applicant that I may have mixed up on here that was interested. I'm wondering if maybe instead of Kirk, maybe you just appoint Judy and Abby and then wait and see what happens. Like if Bev, if Ellen, you know, retires instead of, I mean, this has always been a very small committee. I don't want to all of a sudden make the committee huge um, well, we when also, it hasn't been historically. We also need to make sure that there's a transfer of information. And exactly. Bev, and Bev, is, Bev and Carol, I think, were the primary. Yep, I think, yes, definitely. And Bev of, was. They both had banking, strong banking backgrounds and things. Exactly. But it's also yeah. managing a town town money. Yeah. So we're going through this with the trustee and public yeah. fund thing now. There's mm -hmm. so much there's a ton of documentation that it's has true. to be 
Well, the good thing with with them is they are only an advisory committee. They don't actually they, their loans all have to come to the select board before they're approved, right. um, which is which is nice. But I did talk to Bev, and Bev was excited about Abby and Judy um, because she was like, "Oh, thank goodness, they both have you yeah. know banking experience." Good. Good. Um, because as Bev says, "I'm not getting any younger trees." So uh, yeah. so yeah. she was very excited about those two. Uh, and of course, you know they they are fine. She knew Kirk, but. Um, I'm not sure oh, if she good. knew of the I other applicant. But yeah, so I just didn't, you know, thinking this through, you have four people, but there's really like one slot, possibly two. I'm wondering if maybe instead of doing everybody, I don't think Kirk's feelings aren't going to get hurt here. Maybe if you just appoint yeah. the two with banking experience, see how it goes, and then if they want to grow the committee. But it seems like you got to do it. Yeah, yeah, what she know. maybe once they have them, I'll encourage Bev to have Abby and Judy. And the four of them get together and you know and have a kind of a meeting. So, yeah. um, well, I, I don't think will be offended. It seems like so. in, in some ways I think his interest is because of the work he's doing in the legislature and yeah. really focused on economic development. You know, right. you could see that as a way to aid. That doesn't you know exempt him from being able to help Bethel right. and, and advise the committee. If that's exactly. helpful. Right. That's a good, a good way. Yeah. Yeah, Jean. Uh, just. Uh, clarification about uh, Tom Gauthier. Uh, yeah. Is he he's more interested in a town committee than this one now? Well, it was it was obviously I made a mistake. I Chris pointed it out to me just before the meeting, but um, I had reached back out to Tom because it, that we had all of a sudden had a bunch of interest right. in the committee. And so I did ask him if he'd be willing to serve on another committee. And he did say recreation. So I emailed him back and asked him to attend a meeting. And I gave him the energy committee meeting because he was also interested in the, um, it was his recommendation about the- Level three chargers. About the level three chargers. So I did have right. Kelly email Tom and give him both the next upcoming meetings about both so he could attend and talk to the chairs. He's also a fireman. Um, so well, certainly he has his hands full, I imagine. <laughs> right. But, yeah. I just want a clarification. Yeah, no, thank you. I made a mistake. So thank you. No. no. So, so it looks like Judy and Abby. Okay. So Is that what we were thinking? I'd go with that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Move to appoint Judy Fairland and Abby Solomon. To be appointed to the revolving loan fund committee. Second. Be all in favor? Aye. 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 Great. So thank you so much, Abby. Uh, Kelly in the office will be sending you a letter of appointment, and then I'll reach out to Bev and see about having um, having by Lenny. See about having um, Bev. You know, maybe do an organizational meeting to get the four of you together. Great. Thank and you so much. Out. Yeah, thank you. Okay, I'm nice going to step away. Have a good meeting. Yeah, thank thanks. You. It was nice to meet you. Thank you. All right. Flying through it. Now the big one. Ooh. <laughs> Not too late, Paul. That's in the chat. And then at the next one, I had talked to Therese earlier. And so normally, how, um, normally how the deputy health officer goes, so the Typically, the the health officer of the town can and will appoint deputy health officers to aid and assist in in um, the practices. We're, currently, we do not have an active. Well, we do, but it's me. <laughs> so currently, we <laughs> currently we do not have you know a, a, a citizen of the town that is just the health officer. So what happens is. Those duties um, default back to the chairperson at the board. Um, so I, as of, got my official badge. <laughs> um, last week, um, currently am in that capacity until we find a permanent replacement. So we, we've had some names that have come in and around, but we are still currently looking for a person um, that wants to take on the health officer full time. Um, so currently, um, Paul has expressed his interest in being an appointed deputy health officer to assist the, the town health officer, which is currently me. So um, I don't believe at the select board level we have to make that appointment, that but okay. I can duly swear you. Yeah, it has to be signed the, by the chair of the local board of health. 
So which would be you. So that would be at this point it's mm -hmm. basically, you know, Paul and I having having something here. So I can sign sign his recommendation form and then and then you can get all the reading material that I got um, last week that I'm still going through. So I, I did. <laughs> will I get a badge? Yeah, you will, yes. But yours will have your name on it. Mine oh. mine says chair of select board, so <laughs> um, so this, this appointment, usually the appointments at that level are a three-year level appointment. And granted, just like anything else, you know, out of whatever year down the road, you could always discontinue doing that when, um, so w we kind of talked about this at uh, last time at the meeting, you know, we're, the intent is not to have select board members on committees or being officers of, of the community, but in this case, we don't have somebody, um, so somebody has to fill in. So um, currently we we board members are, are sorry, Paul and I will will help um, until we can find a permanent replacement. So the, the goal is as soon as we find a permanent replacement, because Doug hasn't raised his hand yet, um, that we will serve in that capacity. So so it says on the form um, okay. So we have to put Paul's information and then it says, please give a brief statement noting why the select board believes the recommended individual make a good health officer. So I wrote that Paul has a construction background. He's generally just a really nice guy. <laughs> I'm, no, I didn't write that, I'm just kidding. I don't know what else you want to say in here, but. He's so um, pretty. I mean, normally. He's a pretty sharp guy, yeah. so. I mean, normally a lot of what comes into the health officer is you know, obviously anything in the Healthcare settings is is helpful as well as anything in the construction trade background because usually it's a combination of looking at looking at structures and dealing with potential health um, physical health issues. Um, but it's not to say that somebody that doesn't have um, that field that you know with the train proper training couldn't couldn't acquire that. Um, and it is a position that we're looking to change the compensation on. Yes. Because I noticed that we had it in the volunteer section yeah. of the yeah. of the website, and that's, that may be a negative. Yeah, we have we have definitely, um, and and that's probably something that we as the board at the next um, at the next meeting we should probably talk about is the compensation for the health officer when we when we finally get one. Oh. Um, because you know we had talked about the six hundred dollars is you know probably not an appropriate. No. Um, Do you think it would help to have that discussion bef before we necessarily get somebody so it can be a bit of a yeah, selling? Yeah, that's point. what I'm thinking. Yeah. Is that like I did reach out to a, a handful of people. I haven't heard back from anybody, but it, it was a little bit awkward to be like, it's a stipended position which might be increasing, but it's up for discussion. <laughs> it was like, yeah. how do I state yeah. this that it's like? Yeah, the there gentleman. is a stipend that might be more. Right. The gentleman that was interested actually didn't want the money. He wanted the money to go to the deputy health officers and possibly more. I did tell him that the select board realized that they had to possibly, you know, double or triple the stipend or come up with an hourly rate. Um, he was going to reach out to, which I could do, send an email to to Neil, call Neil, and figure out, you know, how many hours did Neil think that he that he, you know took on projects in the past, how many, you know, how many hours in a year did it take him? Although somebody new could take him longer mm -hmm. um, to do that. But I think that was one thing he talked about is maybe was it maybe going from 600 to, I don't know if you'd said 2,400. I don't remember what you had said. For we, we were kicking state. around numbers. But I think, you know, I mean, it, 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 within reason, there's probably no, no amount of money that you know, should persuade someone to kind of get to find somebody that wants to do this, well, um, go, has some spare time. and If you go online, there's a couple there. Essex is there. I think Burlington is there. And they're a full-time position that pays in the 58 oh, I, to 58,000 kind of range. Of course, yeah, 28, there. you know, 28, $30 an hour do kind we, of a Is there a site kind of or is there like, I don't know, make it is. Is there an organization that could just pull that information, like every town, what they do for health officers? Or Only if they're listed. Like that? Only if it's listed in the VLCT um, compensation benefit mm -hmm. book that they put together. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you'd have to go town by town. Mm -hmm. I can look in there because they do mm -hmm. participate in the salary survey. Yeah, Gene. There was another site called. Uh, 
Oh, sorry. Yes. Two sorry. questions. One a question and the other is a comment. The comment first. It was my understanding we were going to talk about the compensation at this meeting. Uh, second, do we need to move, have, take any action regarding the, the, the assistant or associate or the deputy health officer? Or is that just uh, something we need to be informed about? No, you'll have to make a motion because it says that the chair of the local board of health. So you would have, so the local board of health is the select board and the health officer. So right now that's the select board and, and Chris and okay. his dual role. Um, so yes, you will need a motion to appoint Paul um, to deputy health officer. If you wanna talk about the salary, that's fine. Um, I guess for some reason I, I had it up, still was up in the air, but, um, and I can look at VLCT salary survey to see if they do talk about um, any positions like that that are um, volunteer positions or stipended positions, other because that was Chris's question. Otherwise, I don't, you'd have to look town by town. It'd be nice to know, you know, based on somewhat similar population base, what the, yeah. their stipends might be. And, and just for the record, I'm, you know, um, I'm not taking any stipend on this, so you get the discount of the whole $250 for the year for the select board. So, <laughs> so we'll add, I can add that to the next agenda, the health but. officer stipend, and see if I can come up with some more information. Well, all right. Currently, it's $600 in the voted budget. I mean, if we wanted to throw darts on the board, I mean, I was, you know, kind of thinking based upon kind of some of the time that I've known that I put into it that, you know, it's probably more like a $2,400 to $3,000 a year type appointed position from what I could see. Um, but, but again, it's kind of throwing darts at the board, you know. Um, and it may be like that because there's some towns where the person doesn't take a stipend. Some pieces they get one. Some places it's an hourly rate. I don't really think there's a wrong answer here. Mm. It's probably just what you're comfortable with. Um, well, but it's also going to be, I think, if you're going to have, we had talked about having a health officer and a couple of deputies. So everybody, you know, needs to be compensated. It could be X for the health officer, or maybe it's split three ways equally. Everybody mm. gets 1,200 or, or maybe it's hourly. So if one, if the health officer, you know, pushes everything to one of the deputies, then, you know, then the de that deputy should be, get more compensation, you yeah. know, so I, I'm, I, you could be creative here. Yeah. Uh, my, well, um, my, my thoughts were to have something of an hourly between 15 and 25, but that's, just what I was thinking, and it is throwing a dart. I understand that. Um, the um, yeah, so I was just that's what I was thinking in anticipation of this meeting. Um, if we're going to move ahead, uh, do we want to appoint Paul tonight or wait until that conversation is over? Paul said you could appoint him tonight. Yeah, I think the, the conversation will be more productive if we have some realistic numbers, even if we decide to go stipend versus hourly, like just having some data. I like the, I like the hourly rate um, I do idea concept myself. Mm. I, I think the hourly rate is a good idea um, because it just feels like you can quantify it a little bit more. Yeah. And, um, because it could end up, you know, you get a couple of th issues and it could be a huge time suck that you don't, you know, can't account for. And I, like I said, I'll reach out to Neil again and see if how many well, the hours. The difference to the hourly is just budgeting for hours, you know. I don't know. It's going to be a flat, yeah. yeah. Maybe one Either year it's $1,000, the next year it's $3,000. No, so it's kinda, true enough. But, no, I, I agree. It's definitely, it's, it's, it's definitely one of the you know, pieces that hasn't been updated in so long that, you know, we've all agreed that, that we need to get into the 21st century here with, with the pay on it. Um, and I would also, uh, just as we're thinking about this, uh, that 
we are now if we go with an hourly uh we have we now we have uh, all kinds of taxes and other kinds of uh other issues that need to be added to our expense so uh, it's, it's not just the salary or the compensation to the officer, but there are other expenses that that accrue as well. Yep, there's certainly, yeah, absolutely. There's FICA and Medi and, you know, and I, and because it's appointed, I don't, I'm not sure about the workers' comp coverage, but we can certainly find out. So, uh, have, are we pretty much agreed that we're good with moving forward with the appointment of Paul as the deputy, even though we haven't hashed out any of the mm -hmm. other? So move. <clears throat> second. Okay. So we won't do an all in favor. We get a second. Bye. <laughs> if you need an aye, so but um, you have to. Sign I have to sign it. Sign up. Yeah, right there where it says chair of the local board of health. Oh boy. And then Ms. Paul needs to complete these two forms. Or the first one, and then there's the oath. All right. And, and the next piece that we had here on the list is, you know, we had talked to Therese, I don't know, a couple months ago in regards to, you know, what liabilities do we have on the books when it comes to um, debt, that uh, based on variable versus fixed interest rates and and how can we best position ourselves here with as we're seeing that the federal government is is going through multiple um, uh, rate increases um, as much as I've heard as much as seven different um, uh, potential moves this year um, some of them may be as much as a half a percent at a time so um, so Therese has been doing um, work behind the scenes of getting into what what uh, long-term debt that we have out there or short-term debt and and uh, that we can potentially uh, refinance um, to a fixed rate. Um, um, yep. So uh, she has brought it to our attention that we do have the the tanker um, that um, that right now she would. That's a variable rate that we'd like to move to a fixed rate. Yeah, right now it goes from 2017 to 2026 at a 3.65 percent, and there was some odd terms in that. Remember, I think I read it to you, mm -hmm. and uh, it was crazy. So I reached out to the gentleman and um, at Kansas State Bank, and he said that if he was, if the rates were adjusted on April 7th, we'd go to a 5.2 percent. So he is saying that right now, if we refinance we can refinance to a fixed rate of 3.53% for the remainder of the loan, which is lower than the 3.65 we're paying now, and right. it's gonna fix us to the difference. Obviously, it's gonna change up the payment a little bit, but, um, but in, you know, make the payment a little higher, but at least it will, um, you know, the interest, will end up paying less interest on it. Yeah. Um, the other one was, we talked about was the bond bank, um, and I talked to, um, Ashley Lutz of Bond Bank, she said they're constantly looking at those loans and, and if, if there's anything they can do cheaper, they automatically refinance it and, and um, reissue. Um, the Department of Ag, I actually, her and I had, had a conversation about this loan about a month and a half ago and she said that she was looking to see if, you know, if we should refinance, but because we're currently at 3.75%, on the town hall reconstruction, but because of the type of bond that it is, we actually get two to a percentage of our interest pay back biannually in June and December. So she's like, nah, you're in a better position than we could do. Um, I did reach out to Mascoma Savings Bank. Our lady was on vacation, and then we played a little game of telephone tag today. So we know, we knew when you signed this loan, you knew it was a 3% for a portion of it, and then that the remainder was variable. But they had talked to us a little bit and said that they would be able to, oh, that they would be able to do, um, at some point we could fix it, but so. But the I'm first not, 10 years was like mm, fixed. Yeah, right? at 3.75. So I did email her and asked her, you know, and that's tough because that's debt. You know, she, you know, they're not, We'll see what they say. Anyways, I don't know. She called me, and I called her back, and hopefully I can get back with her tomorrow. But the rest of them are, you know, you're in a good 
position on um, your, you know, you don't have much left on sewer anyways at 3.35, 3% for um, water. This one is a 1% interest, 2% admin fee, and then our big one is 0% interest. So, um, so anyways, uh, I do have, if, um, so the tanker a, seems so to be the, the one that's that the we one. Need. Yep, and the gentleman was said, "Look, if you know, I said, look, we're having a meeting on April 11th. I told him I would reach out to him on the 12th and let mm -hmm. him know. But that seems like a no-brainer if you can go from 3.65 down to 3.53, mm -hmm. be a good move, and they'll fix it to the end of the so tanker. Yeah. yeah, and I think that loan goes to <clears throat> for the 2017, yeah, 2031. Yeah. So, yeah, no, I would agree. I think that's." Yeah. The right move for us there. So, I guess we just need a motion to refinance. Yep, the balance of the 2017 Kenworth tanker to a fixed rate of 3.53 percent. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you, Patrice, for checking in through that. I know you had a little bit of a fun time there going through the Kansas Bank. Yeah, I was like, what? I that was Greek. That was a loan that we had taken out, I don't know, back in Keith. Or, yeah. yeah, before even Greg got here. Yeah. yeah. So. All right, and then um, and then we have some mowing bid um, yep, award. We, we so. worked, or I worked with Cecil Moshburn, the uh, cemetery commissioner and went through, we looked at how it had been bid out a few years ago, it was bid out, I don't know, before I came, I guess, or, and um, so we did look at that, we changed some of the parameters about how it needs to be mowed around headstones, what you can, some of the rules you have to meet with the cemetery commissioner um, the prior to, um, you know, each year before you mow, and so we broke out three of them, so we bid out Fairview, East Bethel, and Cherry Hill. So um, the low bidder for Fairview and East Bethel were Harold Hooker, and the only bidder for Cherry Hill was s, s on maintenance, who currently does it now. So these numbers are like a lump sum? It's what they, 450 per mowing and 140 for trimming, 120 per mowing, 30 for trimming, and so it's cheaper. So and then uh, 480 for mowing and 160 for trimming. That's what their bid price was because we had. That's the way we've broken it out. So, um, so what's left? Uh, so Gilead. that leaves uh, Gilead and uh, I think it's Olympus. But he uh, there's somebody that the cemetery commissioner works with to get them. They do them. He has oh, yeah Gilead, he does that yeah do that do them. So that's why we only had we put the three out. Okay. Any questions in regards to those three bids? Uh, just an F for me. Uh, I, I I know where the East Bethel, but I don't know how the others relate to <laughs> our map. One's at the foot of Christian Hill. Yep. Yep. Cherry Hill. And that's Cherry Hill. Yep. Oh, okay. So then Fairview is headed to Randolph if you before go right before Findlay Bridge on the left okay or back a little ways um, yeah I just I think I saw that the other day so I didn't know there was a cemetery up there okay <laughs> <laughs> that's right. where it is well that's yeah, where it's it all is. from watershed you, Paul's right there's yeah. like watershed and um not pleasant something. but yeah <laughs> oh yeah I don't go out there so it's kind of, so that's where it is all right Okay. So we just need a motion to award uh, per the terms of the performance standards and bid form. <clears throat> so moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 It did look like the grass was starting to turn green, so it won't be long we'll all be doing a fun mowing out there. Swatting, swatting, no soon. The allergies will be back and everything, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> won't skeeters be long. And skeeters and no skate, no see them. So. Yeah, the skeeters will be back. Black fly. <laughs> oh, um, the cemetery commissioner. Um, oh, what is his name? The cemetery commissioner uh, contract with him. What is his name? 
It's, um, oh, I can picture him too. I can't, oh, I feel bad. I can't think of his name. Um, I can't think of his name right now. I'm so sorry. And I know what it is too. Um, it's right on the tip of my tongue, but it'll come to me and I'll, I'll blurt it out in a minute. Yeah. Um, yeah um, oh, shoot. You'll get a call at 10 Yeah, I can't think of what his name is. And I, yeah, I, I can't think of what his name is. It'll come to me. But like I said, I can picture what he looks like, but. Good job. You stumped her. That's I can't, yeah, I can't think of Keep what his name is, Jason. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, Shoot. In Gilead. Yeah, is this, I think, it, Cecil, the cemetery commissioner. Been doing it? No, I don't know if he does it or if he coordinates with somebody else yeah, to do it. Else. Okay. Because I think he does one of them. And um, Todd Ashley? Yeah, his grandson. That's who does one of them. Cecil's grandson. Okay, yeah, that's his name. But he does one of them. There. All right. <laughs> feel better now. <laughs> I don't think of his name. Um, so anyways, okay. Good. Town manager report. So um, we did, I put out the stone wall to bid and the one bidder was Greg Barr. So um, he's gone through it with me. We're going to meet there and go through it. Um, but this will be the second time we put this out and he's the only bidder mm -hmm. that the first nobody bid the first time. So I'll provide you with the details of that after I meet with him in the next week or two. He had another project that he was doing, but he had a really good plan. As you could see, the side pieces are just have collapsed and there's issues with the stairs going down and cracks there. Um, so obviously I know how much money we have, you know, set aside that we've saved to do it. And it looks like we'll probably do it in two, two time, two places, get this done. Um, so phase one was to get stairs. the pieces of the stairs. <laughs> the end done, and right? the stairs. Yeah. yeah. And if there's a little extra money, we'll go a little further and then hopefully finish it up next year. It's an interesting, uh, situation because, <clears throat> excuse me, it's a concrete, you know, wall. And then it was designed to look like loose stone. But he said part of the problem is, is the mix that they used, whoever it saw, to use the, the mortar, he said, just isn't yeah. tough enough. And so there was like too much sand too much in it sand. or something. Riddle so <coughs> while he's here, excuse me, I did ask him when we meet here to look at that. Sorry, that was right. I'm going to ask him to look at the front of town hall mm -hmm. because there's some places that need to be repointed, repointed. on the hall. Uh, which Tim had pointed out when we were digging up, you know, one time I'd come by and he said, hey, let's walk around and look at the hall. Mm -hmm. So it just basically that some of the mortar is cracked and, you know, we need to look at that. It'd be something to deal with now before it gets, you know, out of hand, at least figure out what we have. Um, and I did finally got the roof fixed, so it's not leaking over there anymore. So Bob Conniff a couple Saturdays ago finally got over to put that boot on and then um, bring somebody in to fix the inside. So... So anyway, so I'll have a, a better cost breakdown, but Greg's going to, you know, he'll fit us in here too because of the roads, back roads are so bad and some of the other towns that he can't get to them right now, he said it would be a good time for them to start getting fixed, so, yep. which would be great. <clears throat> We've been trying to get that. Um, so obviously I told you that Alan had given his notice. Um, I submitted our paving grant application uh, for Christian Hill. My guess is that we probably won't get that money right now. Usually paving grants come on a three-year cycle, but because the state also got a large amount of money um, from American Rescue Plan money and wherever else they're funneling it through, my hope is that they funnel it through existing grant programs so we can get more structures grants, more paving grants, but we'll see. I'm going to submit a structures grant. I'm waiting for someone is giving me an estimate on when you come down Sand Hill to Peavine, there's that bridge that constantly floods right there. So looking at that structure, so I'm waiting for a price right now to take that out and make that a um, a, lar a box culvert. And I've also requested a hydraulic study from the state. So um, that'll be another grant that we'll submit. Um, I get, have brought you hard copies of the accessibility audit that's on a website, but I also gave you that. So I do have a hard copy. Um, of that. The, um, the other thing I want to talk about is there's an opportunity, it's not due till June, but before I put the legwork into it, um, 
there is currently a another large grant program out from the state for um, uh, used to be they had safe routes to school they've really gotten rid of that program now it's like a bike pedestrian program or grant program so what when we did part of our walk audit the other night for um, better connections part of the issue that I've heard a lot about is the sidewalk you know for getting the kids from school to the downtown so if you look in front of starting in front of John and Janice Gifford's house at at Sand Hill to go from there to the school to install sidewalk so I had um, received some information about it and then reached out to read at two rivers and that's an 80 20 match or 80 20 so you know 20 percent from us so and those generally are four year three or four year process because it takes you know once you go out to bid and then you need to have it engineered and you know and there's going to be some construction <coughs> easement that we need to get along with permanent easement to maintain so before I put any effort into this, I'm just curious if the select board is that's a project you're yeah. willing to back. Mm -hmm. I think so. Um, yeah. Okay. I mean, we had talked about, and of course, not all of us were on the board at the time, but you know, whatever it was, seven years ago, you know, we had the whole stretch of sidewalk from from Church Street all the way up to Pleasant Street, and the first piece that was in the works when I got on the board was the Church Street piece, which did get done what five years ago. Maybe before that, because I wasn't here. It's yeah, more. it was so that piece got that. done, and the next yeah. piece, the next phase, I guess you would call it, that we were concerned about was the piece from you know the Pleasant Street piece mm -hmm. yeah. down to the school or GW Plastics or wherever it ends um, was the next piece that we had talked about at that time. Yeah, um, and then there was also I think the piece out in front of the library. Yep. Uh, well, maybe. And then for, for Fortitude's side yeah. is in really There's rough pieces, condition. Yeah, pieces on heading yeah. down Main Street, um, right around the library area, and then on, on the opposite side mm -hmm. that we had talked about as well. What I'm hoping is that once we, my understanding is once we finish the Better Connections project and Du Bois and King comes up with a plan and all that, that it's going to open up some avenues for grant money that we wouldn't normally get because by not going through this process. So this bike ped program, we can get this money and this may be a case where our 20% could be leveraged with our ARPA money. So um, depending on how that I wraps probably, up. I could probably wheel it and give you some sort of ballpark estimate what you know what those numbers right now are going for. for yeah. Because it's probably going to be, I think most of that down there is granite curb, right? So yeah. you could probably pull up and reset that granite curb tear out the old sidewalk, pour new, well, probably want it to be concrete sidewalk. But there's, there. There, but there's also a piece, I believe it's And then you Ms. probably want to do Applequest. your drainage at the same time if you but have it, any. Yeah, in front of Miss Applequest, the, the retaining wall mm. is, is kind of tilting. The other thing is too, is that is not a five foot sidewalk. So is that something that, um, that it was something. To be wider. Well, yeah. yeah, usually the minimum, I believe the minimum ADA compliance is five feet. So that's something that we have to look at because I don't believe that's five foot sidewalk right there either. It isn't, no yeah. way. Yeah. But that whole wall there, even though it's not too high, could be a completely different, you know, could be a game changer there depending on yeah, I what mean, needs you, to be done there. I mean, exactly. Well, you're right. You need to deal with the drainage. There's obviously, as we go down through there, there's some storm drain work that needs to happen, some storm water. But we're also, as part of Better Connections, doing mm -hmm. our stormwater master plan. But but anyways, um, right. so that would be a piece, and in which case, if the timing was right, we could leverage that, our ARPA money, our 20% would gain us a pretty big project. So Read It Two Rivers is willing to help and kind of map it out. It's, it's a bigger grant application, mm -hmm. so I'll get a hold of her. But yeah, it's going to have to be needed. five it's, foot. That sidewalk is... And luckily, it's in our. It doesn't turn. We wouldn't be installing anything in the state highway until you know it turns over for them before we win. So, but it's a good time to do it too because you got to think. We're GW probably, hasn't done anything yet, so you know we're probably mm -hmm. another half a dozen years away from them milling and repaving yes. this area mm -hmm. again. So. 
to have that sidewalk in just before that. Yeah, it would be, be good. And then, time, so. especially too, if Better Connections opens up Marnie for the downtown sidewalks, mm -hmm. then yes, we definitely want to get that done before we yeah. deal with anything else. So I just want to make sure before I put mm -hmm. any time into this application and ask Rita that you'd be willing to support the 20% match mm -hmm. and to see what the project is. But yeah, um, I think all right, so that's good. So that's then we, we will move. I will let Rita know. And yeah, if you're gonna wheel that, let me know or I can. Yeah, other than the other than the wall, I can probably get you a pretty good idea of what the okay. reset in the curb and stuff. Yeah, and then, and it may be, obviously it's gonna be, there's gonna be some legal work because of the easement and obviously a part of this is yeah. engineering, construction management. I mean, the grants, it grows a bit because because it's a, that it's gonna require is, all that. Does anybody have any <clears throat> history of the area of the wall? Is it? Is it earth or is there is there a legend there or something or is Looked, there, uh, I think it's, it looks like it's just concrete the way right that it's leaning. Street, <laughs> in front of oh. mirror. I think it's Miss Applequest's. I know, I don't know. I don't know anything about that. That wall has been leaning. Yeah. For, yeah. Since but I wonder area. what the earth is behind it. Like, if it's just. I, I just think. I just think. Whoever put the, put it in yeah. over time, it just kept coming. So the kids that walk along. It's all the kids that walk along it. They just, yeah. Yeah, well, <laughs> just well, well, I know they have to do like that. To get by it. Kids, no. I mean, if it's just as simple as earth, you know, you just yeah. excavate it out, and you could probably build in a timber wall or something that yeah. wouldn't be that. But if there's like ledge or something there, then it could be a, a completely I different. Imagine it's probably ground. It's clearly something that is soft enough to push that wall out. Mm -hmm. So that that suggests to me that there's a good bit of earth behind it, at least at the top. Um, yeah, it's one of those things that could be a, once you get in the middle of it, could be a different undertaking. Yes, Lily. Thanks. Um, I just had a question that as you're looking at that grant, Therese naturally would really be looking at not just replacing it, but like safety and accessibility for students to really use it and be safe and like curb cuts and crosswalks, all of that would be a part of it. Sure. Yep. Yep. It would. We would deal with drainage. We would deal with increasing the size from maybe four foot to five foot, which helps, you know, sidewalk plow and helps that. Yes. And then any crosswalks that we have in, they would look at signage and and all that. I know that um, someone had suggested putting a crosswalk up higher than it already is. It ends up down near Dennis Wood's property. Um, someone wanted a little higher, but you know, one of the things that people don't always think about is sight distance. A lot of times it's 11 times the speed limit is what you're looking for for sight, sight distance. So, um, but someone, you know, engineer would look at all that and, and crossing and also too for us, uh, the thing that would be, um, if we could do any sort of speed control um, down there to get people to slow down, but. But they would depend. Yeah, that may be such, outside the scope. But we could ask. And such an opportunity to work with the better connections. What we learn from that and integrating, yeah, signage or flags or like whatever we learn about safety that goes with that. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. yeah so cool. it would definitely be all those things: sidewalk, stormwater, safety. Um, <clears throat> whether or not we target speeding, I don't. I don't know because it's a sidewalk grant. But we'll see what we can squeak out of them if we even were awarded the grant. But we have to apply Thank first. You. But the, app mm -hmm. the application for safe school sidewalks, whatever, might also include that crosswalk to the ball fields mm -hmm. from the school and sidewalks from wherever that crosswalk is to the entrance to the ball field. Yeah. So you may not have heard me say that I had, when we had gone on our walk, I had thought maybe a safe routes to school grant opportunity, but apparently they've done away with the safe routes to school program. But I think this has kind of taken its place a little bit. It's like a pedestrian slash bike. So yeah, we would, you know, obviously the great thing about these grants is it's engineering and it's a three to four year process. So, you know, everybody's got their eyes on it. But um, we could talk to I, Bernie. So it'd be good. We could talk to <laughs> Bernie. It could be the Sanders sidewalk. Yeah. He wants to give away more money. <laughs> he, Sanders sidewalk. He does. Bernie's sidewalk. Hill to Sanders sidewalk. Yeah. Let's change up the name. <laughs> yeah. He does want to give away more money, Gene. And I saw that from um, Haley that he'd extended his um, request for for more projects. Um, I haven't had a chance to submit anything new to him um, since he just gave us six hundred thousand dollars. I was. Sure, how far it's going to push my luck, but um, 
you know, and, but I don't have another project laid out, honestly, except currently. We will after better connections, so it may be we don't this round, but we do another round. And then we don't look as greedy, so maybe we're able to, we got money this time, not next year, but the year after, so we'll see. Um, so that was it I had. I just wanted to make sure okay. that you were open to the 80-20 split, you know, and yeah. we'll have a better idea. You don't have, you're not committing to anything except I want, didn't want to spend the time right. if you weren't willing to do it. Um, the no, other things good. in your packet is that Kelly was reminding everybody here that Green Up Day is Saturday, May 7th. Um, she did a little volunteer of the week that was, we were talking in house about things we could do to, to, you know, better reach out. And so it was actually was Stevie Neeron. So yep. it was a very cute picture. He was very excited. He did a really good job cleaning up downtown. Yeah, he's still working on it. I so saw him down at the yeah. um, store. Yeah. He was doing a good job. Yeah, so I think that's a think nice. We can do something for Stevie. Um, so, you know, Stevie does get paid to during the winter when right, he right. gets when he's shoveling and doing saws. So he, I talked to him today, and he'd been doing it. He just was excited to. He needed something to do to take oh, yeah. up his time. Yeah, he yeah. said so. I think Alan had given him a little jacket, and they have a cone, and you know, he has safety stuff. So um, okay. you certainly well, could do something more yeah. for him mm -hmm. than you do now. Currently, what we do pay him for is is in the winter. But yeah. if you wanted to do something, it certainly let me know. But he was just excited. He wanted a copy of his own, of uh, Kelly's post, so. So thank you, Stevie. And select board minutes from the 28th. So unless anybody had any changes to it, just I a did. motion. To I, wait. I see what may be some editorial uh, issues on the second page. Uh, I don't know if we want to go through them or just say that editorial stuff can be handled offline. Okay, you can send me a. I'll I'll send you that and um. Yeah, the, the only thing that isn't is uh, there's I have confusion. Uh, in the second paragraph from the bottom third line up. They if, on page unsure, one or two, two. Okay, yeah. They if unsure if the health officer piece, the new health officer yeah. should yeah. fill the remainder. They if unsure if the new health officer would fill the remainder. I'm just that's confusing to me, and I don't know who they is. And I oh, oh, okay. Oh, oh, all right. I'm sorry. Instead yeah. of if, it may be supposed to be are. They, they are, are unsure. unsure. Yes, they are. Yep, sorry. Yep, I didn't even see that one. Is that a select board is unsure? Yes, you were unsure if the health officer would fill the remainder of Neil's position or if a new person would. Right. So I could say the board. Yeah. Uh, so that was the only thing that wasn't that was confusing to me. Oh yeah, after. no, I get that. I didn't see it when I reread them when I edited the minutes. Okay. They, okay so the I will send you my copy of that page. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay. You correct the spelling of my name. I could have sworn I hit search and tried to fix all of them. It's probably one of those things that like. Well, it's, it's, it changes it. The wrong way, you know. Where is it? Is it wrong throughout? It's very first yeah, sentence. First one on the very right top. Paul, for all of your spelling and why, why don't you just change your last name? Yeah. Yeah. Really, oh, we here have this. I, I, oh, what yeah. Times yeah. Not, that's the way I got it. Yeah. yeah, usually I'll hit the search oh, yeah. and find and replace to try oh, to no. pick it up, yeah, but it this, doesn't. This is not uncommon. It could be one of those where it just changes. It is, yeah. It comes, changes it on yeah. you. When it comes, no, when it comes from, um, when it comes from Julie, Correct. I think it's Julie's, yeah, that keeps, I yeah, think it probably auto-corrects on her. Once before too, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah but, but I the, thought we this. had found them all, but thank you. Do you have anything else, Paul? No. Okay. Right. So we just need a motion to approve as amended. So moved. Second. Hey, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Jean's good. All right. Green up and volunteer, please. Yeah. 
meetings are fast and efficient. Yeah, and we end don't tell eight. him. He'll so be just yeah, everybody give Dave a call as soon as it's over. Just let him know how quick it went. And that's worth 20 minutes. I know. Yeah. Yeah. That's even with the audio delays. <laughs> Right. So, uh, unless there's any other business come before the board. Here and motion will adjourn. What, do you know what time Second it is? Second that. 45. 745. Yep. Okay. Paul, that was you, Paul. Okay. <laughs> motion to adjourn. Okay. So All right, thank you. See you later.